we do gather together for worship this day, this is Holy Trinity Sunday when we remember the different ways that God relates to us in the midst of our lives of faith. And trying to explain it is near impossible, so uh, we, won't, we won't commit any heresy today by doing so. So, But we do continue to pray for all those who are listed in your bulletin. Uh, we do remember the lives of of uh, Regina Johnson, Lauren's mother, who passed away unexpectedly uh, a few days ago, and also for Ursula's brother, uh, Helmut um, Winnert. Win uh, so please do keep those families in your prayers. I also ask for prayers for my neighbor, Jane Sawyer, who has a rare form of cancer, if you keep her in your prayers. And we are also mindful of the horrific train crash in India over the weekend that killed uh, a couple hundred or more people, so we do keep those communities in our prayers. We also give thanks for lots of graduations happening uh, that have happened and will be happening uh, over the course of the next month or so. Is there anyone else that we should be especially mindful of in this, this morning's worship? So you might know, invite those who are joining us online to add any other prayers to our feed as well as to let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. I invite those who are here present to please stand as we are called together into God's presence. Great God, the evidence of your love covers our world. Great Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus, God incarnate, we are grateful for your continued lessons of love, service, and sacrifice. Great Breath of God, we feel your presence in, around, and among us. Holy Spirit, us the book of Proverbs tells us that from the beginning of time, wisdom cries out to all people. We do not always care to listen. So let us now bring our confessions to God together as we pause and think about those ways in which we need God's forgiveness and grace. Great wisdom maker, we arrange the world in beauty and brought human kind to life upon it. You want what is best for us. You even came to be among us in Jesus Christ. We confess that we do not always pay attention. We admit that we do not always listen. We own up to taking the shortcuts and the easy ways because sometimes we do not be able to do Forgive us, we pray, for the things we can acknowledge, and especially for the things we try to hide from ourselves and in you. Hear the good news. Beloved children of God, the maker of beauty, goodness, and wisdom, offers us forgiveness to each and every one of us. God is ever and always healing, renewing, healing us, renewing us, and preparing us for deeper understanding through the Holy Spirit. This is the good news that brings new life. Thank God for it. Know that God's forgiveness, love, and grace is given to you and for you in the name of our Father and Creator, God's Holy Son, Jesus the Christ, and the life-giving and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in our opening hymn.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And triceratops and 
There's been all kinds of different things. And each and of us. also made our years. Made our years? Yeah, made the days. Made the days, made time itself, right? And it made our time. And it also made the days go so on forever. Everything. Everything. There's nothing that we can see that God did have a part in. Even things that we make, right? We make them because God gives us the gifts to make them, right? Yeah, He gives us the materials to make them. So, so we talk about materials to make lots of stuff. Even that, right there. And right, so that the banner the over there, the quilt over there. Right, and God gave us creative. Yes, and God made you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Yes. And He made me. And God made everybody. And our parents. God made the universe. God made even the tiniest little thing that you have to see with a microscope. And God made things as big as the sun and the universe. That's pretty amazing. He made, he made sand, everything. everything. God sand made everything. very small. <laughs> but even the tiniest the thing. The germs are bad. Well, there's some germs that are good. Yeah, yeah, some, th yeah. some things we need. Yeah, right? there's some germs that we need. Right. So the other part of God is God's the creator and God's the spirit. Remember we had our flame glasses a couple weeks ago, right? The Holy Spirit. We were going to still have those. All right, very good. Right. We yes. we have to we have to sing a song. We have to sing we'll sing a song. Like that. But yeah. so but the other thing, so we got God the creator, right? And God the spirit, and we got Jesus, right? So what are the things we're gonna do for the summer? Because I call her this one. There's a bunch of different examples like on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I painted his nails red. Yeah. Um, so there's a bunch of these. Who is that? Who do we think this is? God. It's Jesus. God, also known as Jesus, right? So it's ever hear of ever, any of you do anything with Flat Stanley at school? Ever hear of Flat Stanley? Uh -huh. right. Well, uh, it is one the verse where they did like the little ones did um, Humphrey the hamster had to like, travel with him and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So he's a hamster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so what I'm gonna do? What you're gonna do is we've got a this. We have one like this. We have a bunch of different ones. They all look different. And you're gonna color them in, cut them out because it's on harder paper, stiffer paper. And then wherever you go this summer, maybe when you come to church, or maybe when you go to the game, or maybe when you just go to the grocery store with your mom or dad. You'll take them with you and have have them take a picture of it, show it where Jesus is, right? Because God's with us all the time, right? Yeah. And so we can take a picture and you'll send it to me. Adults can do this too. This is what I love. Our the love is already there, right? We still love we still love those who like, want to be with God, right? So that does like my grandma, right? And like, you know, like my grandparents too. So, my so, yes, he is. He's right there. Right over there. Yeah. I see so, you guys are gonna, so, you guys are gonna take flat Jesus and take him with you. So, there's instructions on the back, so you can see that as well. All right. So, that you can take him and cover him, and um, this is well done, so we'll have it for you. So, I think somebody was ready to sing, wasn't he? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> So, which, who should do what I part? I sing a song How about this side does the praise the Lord? This side do praise the Lord, and this side do Alleluia. Right? You got it? I do. All right, so what's your part? You stand up or raise your hand. All right? Okay, ready? I do this side. I do this side. Yeah. Alleluia. 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 Readings from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 
Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Word of God, word of life. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. One of many things that I inherited from my mother is the, the fact that I love mysteries. She, she's a voracious reader. Um, she would, I think she's read all of the Agatha Christie's at least, I don't know, two or three times. You'll have to tell me if you're watching, Mom, how many times you've read them. Um, but also sorts of different mysteries. I like mysteries because uh, at the end, usually everything is tied up with a nice bow, right? That everything's solved, all the, everything's been answered, and you can, oh, you're kind of satisfied at the end of that, right? That it all works out and all finally usually makes some sort of sense in the end. Trinity, not so much. It's said that more heresies are preached about on Trinity Sunday than any other Sunday in the church year because we try to explain the Trinity as best we can, and no matter how hard we try, no matter how many books have been written about the Trinity, no matter how many theologians have grappled with it, still, yeah, it still doesn't always make sense. Tried to explain it using things like water, that water can be a liquid, it can be solid, like, a, like an ice cube, it can be vapor. I've used the example of an apple, where an apple is a whole apple, you can't have an apple without the core and the seeds and the meat of the apple and the skin. But even that is just so inadequate. And what we are left with is mystery. We don't maybe like mystery, but think about it, God is much more than we could ever possibly imagine. And the more we try to get a handle on God, like we try to get a handle on the Holy Spirit, the more we try to get a handle on God, yeah, it's still lacking. Well, it's frustrating on the other one hand, it's also pretty exciting to think about how God is much more than we could ever imagine. Now, one of the things that was done when the creeds were putting together, we try to explain the, the Trinity through the creeds. We have the Apostles' Creed. We have the Nicene Creed, which is the longer creed. And then there's an even longer creed. It used to be when we had a green hymnal. It used to be in our green hymnal. Not sure why they took it out. And there's some churches that chose to do the Athanasian Creed. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can see how long it is on <laughs> both pages. Uh, that, that tries to explain... Um, both Jesus in particular, but also the Trinity. So I'm going to just read a couple parts for you. It says, now this is the Catholic faith, meaning universal faith. We worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the divine being. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, the Spirit is still another, but the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-eternal in majesty, 
what the father is, the son is, and so it goes on and on like that. Doesn't really make it any clearer, no matter how much we study it. But the Trinity is in many ways about how God has chosen to relate to us in the midst of our lives. If God is greater than we can imagine, God then chose, particularly in Jesus, to limit God's self by becoming human, as well as divine, and that doesn't make sense either. There are lots of theologians arguing about that, whether that's how the creeds came to be. But God chose to limit God's self in order to relate to us. God created the heavens and the earth, yes, maybe for God's enjoyment, but also because God needed a way to express God's creativeness, but God's love more than anything else. And God created us in God's image because God wanted someone to be in relationship with. Unlike all the other gods, all the other beliefs about a variety of gods, many of them were capricious and wanted something from them. It was all only about themselves. But our God, our God has chosen both to limit God's self, but also to love us unconditionally, no matter what. No matter what. Even though again and again we can read throughout scriptures and we can see in our world today that we turn away from God, thinking we can, we've got it better. We, we, we know better, God. We got this one. We'll take care of it from here. You just go do something else. And God's like, yeah, no, you don't. No, you don't. Reminds us that we need God day in and day out. Not only for the air we breathe and the beautiful creation, but for our relationships for everything that is around us, not only in the created order, but we need this world. And we look at the world that God created out of love and a call to then love God in return, to give thanks to God for everything that we can see, that we can hear, that we can taste, that we can read about, that we can, it goes on and on. God gives us everything. Now, we've messed it up, and we are human, and we are fragile, and we, are, we do live in a broken world that while God could have made it perfect, it would have been kind of boring. <laughs> if God made everything perfect, or all of us the same, it would have gotten pretty boring after a while. God didn't want us to love God because God made us that way. God wanted us to love and care for creation out of our free will, out of choice. I'd much rather have somebody love me because they love me and not because they have to. You know, have somebody who says they love you because they have to. It's required somehow. It's not the same. Or somebody who says they love you but certainly don't act that way. That's not love. But God loves us in our brokenness, in our frailty, and God continues to offer God's creative power in our midst as we go through our brokenness, as we deal with our fragile human bodies that don't always do what we want them to do. But God loves us in the midst of that. God took on the suffering of that, of our human frailty, he took that on on the cross. So that God not only knew of our frailty, but pointed us to God's love again and again that overcomes our frailty, that continues to not just sustain us in this life, but to carry us through into the life to come. Holy Trinity, yeah, too hard to explain. But just imagine how God's love can be continually shown to us in new and in vibrant ways, in ways that we can expect maybe from family and friends, but in unexpected ways where God reaches out to us and offers us grace and healing. In our reading from Corinthians, it ends with the familiar, we hear, hear those very words, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, why, do, why have I heard that before? You know, us, most of our, our uh, a lot of our uh, liturgy is from the Bible. <laughs> Periodically, it will show itself in particular scripture lessons. This is one of them, but it was often how Paul either began or ended his, his letters. 
And it was more than just sincerely Paul. It was the love of God. Let the love of God dwell in you richly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that was revealed on the cross, let that be with you. And the communion of the Holy Spirit, let it be in community because that is how God's love and grace is realized in our midst. That it doesn't happen on its on our own because God created us to be not only in relationship with one other person, maybe, but with the world, with each other. God created us to be in community. Just in a sense, as, and again, this is going to probably end in some heresy, as God relates to God's self as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Again, it gets confusing. How is, yeah, how is there three? How is there one? But God has chosen to relate to us in that way. Because God wants us to know of God's love for us from the beginning of our first breath to the ways in which we need forgiveness and grace and to the ways in which we gather in community together. God's love is more than just some fuzzy thing. There's an all-encompassing love. A love that knows no bounds. A love that cannot be overcome by death itself or by sin or by any of the brokenness and frailty of this world, God's love prevails. And it's for this that we do give thanks to our triune God, God who's revealed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And stand as we sing together our next hymn. of the Trinity, we are bold to proclaim our faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy and triune God, we stand in awe of your unfathomable grace, and we humbly offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, spark of life, creation was envisioned by you and is sustained by you. In gratitude, we pray for the world, that its riches and resources be used responsibly and fairly that its rulers and leaders may govern with justice, compassion, and humility, that humankind may live with understanding and respect, noticing what unites us in your love and mercy. Yeah. Holy One, prophet of love, you lived among us, you lived among us to teach us, to show us how to love. In humility, pray for siblings around the globe. For those dehumanized by their struggle for existence, may we listen. For those overshadowed by the consistency of death, may we notice. For those besieged by fear, anger, and relentless peril, may we show up. For those ensnared by systems beyond their control, may we demand change. In your love and mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy One, breath of being, you are here in this very moment as consistent presence and insistent voice. In gratitude we pray, with boldness we pray. Inundate the world with humanity, overwhelm the world with truth, flood the world with kindness, upset our indifference, accelerate our action, fortify our resolve compel us to authentic discipleship that nurtures creation, embodies love, and breathes life. In your love and mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy and triune one, giver of life and all its fullness, you offer your loving guidance and strength for all who are searching and longing, desiring healing in body, mind, and spirit. Rest your life giving hand upon all those who suffer. Bring comfort to the weary. Bring your strength to all caregivers. We pray especially today for those we name now, allow it or in our hearts. We also lift up in prayer Thomas, Morgan, Matt, Barbara, Joseph, Barbara, Brandon, Tony, Rebecca, Christina, Joseph, Liam, in your love and mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the other petitions may be offered silently, loud, or online in the comments. Remember, I give thanks for the lives of Virginia Johnson and the helmet Clement. Surround their families with your perfect grace and your comfort. We also lift up all the victims of the, the train crash in India and pray for the families as well as the rescue workers as they seek to restore people to their families. I also lift up my neighbor Jane as well as we give thanks for all the graduations that have happened and those that are being prepared for. Surround all of our young people with your presence and your grace. 
As our prayers have ascended like incense before you, we humbly ask for your will to be done here as in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. To share God's peace with one another. Fist bumps or bows or sign or sign. And you may be seated as we continue now with our offering.
minds, so fill our imaginations. So we fall on wills, that we may be holy in yours. Utterly dedicated to you. And please us in these things as we pray, as you will always to your glory and the welfare of our people. For the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you through our Savior Jesus Christ. We reveal your glory as of the glory of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
God and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. We thank you, O oh God, that you have strengthened the hearts for the speech of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path that we may do justice, love, kindness, and walk humbly with you now and forever. Take this opportunity to share our mission and ministry announcements. Anything you want to share? We're doing well with the collection for this world relief, but if you would still would like to bring in items, uh, we'll just be making more kits. So anything that is listed in the bulletin, we can certainly use again. Great, thank you, Larry. Joanne? morning. I come before you today as a member of Trinity and also a member of the Trinity Council. As we come into summer, I just want to remember, uh, remind folks that con Trinity continues to have bills. And so it's of utmost importance that you in fact continue with your offerings. Um, your offerings are important to us because it keeps the building running. Okay, the AC on, the lights on. Um, and so please remember uh, to continue your giving. We all use the building here for Sunday service. Our children are here. They love to come to service. They love pastor <laughs> and the interaction that goes on. We all get a kick out of sitting in the audience here. And so let's keep the lights on here. Um, there are many people in the community that use our church building, okay? Whether it be for AA or Naranon or, you know, Spanish classes, we use it for Welka, for Bible study. So it's an important part of our community. Um, so as you all go off to your summer outings and your family meetings, etc., please remember us. Thank you. Thank you, John. And you can always give online if you're not here, if you don't have a regular giving. If you do want to set up a regular giving, you can do that fairly easy. Yeah. And Don can instruct you if you have questions about that as well. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Come on. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. So good morning, everyone. Some of you know me very well. Some of you may just know me. Um, in years past, we and I have been talking to Pastor Jen about this. Okay. I made a comment like maybe next year. Um, our last year in this church of running something that we call the Holiday Market was in 2019. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And then the bid came, and I'm very sorry for anyone that had bad experiences with it, but at a minimum, it was really annoying. Um, so everything stopped, right? the world, and um, we changed, and things changed, and it wasn't time, wasn't time, wasn't time. I keep getting the sense that it's time again. So I'm sitting here looking at the group, seeing the new people and everything. I just think that the energy is there to do it. The support will be there. To start off the planning, it starts kind of now. I would want some, I would love someone, someone's, to run head up groups. So we need a group for marketing advertising. We need a group for jewelry area, table. I do nothing. So we need someone who likes it, likes to play with it, so likes to organize. We have jewelry or we get donations of used well, jewelry for that. Yes, and you know, some needs to be clean, whatever. And then we need somebody to coordinate maybe a children's area, which is a lovely way to get the community to want to walk in the doors. We would want somebody to coordinate the food area. Huge amounts of money come through this church doors because of the baked goods and the soups. People buy it and take it home. They love that. And we have just such skilled people in the kitchen here, men and women. So just if you're interested, things like that, I think we'll do a sign up for next week. And you can add your name, I'm interested, and the area you're interested in. We'll put it out, right? We'll do something online maybe too. Just to start getting that, I would love to have the big team together first, the leaders, so-called, um, servant leaders, set in place by the end of June, right? So that's, you know, I think a manageable goal, yeah? Is everyone motivated? All right, more to come. <laughs> Thank you. A couple of things to bring to your attention. Uh, 
uh, we had a great time at our church picnic yesterday. Um, for those who are not able to come, we missed you. Um, but a couple different things. We put together um, most, not all, of the affirmation confirmation pictures that we have. And they're in a book in the back. However, they're not all labeled or in necessarily chronological order. Um, sort of, kind of like based on the pastor and the background. <laughs> I kind of did. So we need help of identifying people in those pictures as well as the years. So if you've been here a while or even if you haven't, you can look through it and help us to identify folks so that we can make sure that we have that for our records. Um, also, we joined in this wonderful thing of Martin Luther um, that if you would like to have a selfie taken with the, uh, with the Luther uh, sign, uh, he's, he's holding uh, his 95 theses in one hand and a beer in the other. You know, <laughs> You want, to, you want to bring that you can bring that forward and folks can and see that. Uh, so take selfies, tag yourself, and uh, and uh, we'll put it on Facebook. We have a few from yesterday as well. So. <laughs> Very artistic. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Um, uh, also, as I mentioned to the kids, we're doing Flat Jesus again this year. This isn't just for the kids. Uh, it's open to adults. There's about five or six different versions of Flat Jesus. Uh, there's instructions on the back, so color them in, take them with you. Uh, he's on a little heavier cardboard or paper, so it should last a little better than, uh, than some of the others. Are there any other announcements? Ralph, did you have something? Coffee. Oh, coffee hour. Yes, please stay for coffee hour. Pat baked up a storm yesterday, so we need to really help her out and appreciate her. Seeing nothing else, I invite you to stand as we conclude our worship together with God's blessing. <clears throat> and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. And may he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in our final <laughs>